Welcome to Electron Line. Here we have a situation where a neutron collides with a boron. Turns out that the mass of a neutron, if we call that equal to m, then the mass of the boron with the protons and the neutrons in the nucleus equal 10m. Now, there could be different kinds of collisions. We can think of collisions being elastic or inelastic. We're going to look at several situations. We're going to start out by saying, let's assume that the collision is completely inelastic. If we say that, what that literally means is that they stick together after the collision and a maximum amount of the energy is lost in the collision. The question in this case is, how much kinetic energy is lost in this particular case with the differentiation of mass where the neutron is one-tenth the mass of the boron? All right, the way we're going to do that is use the conservation of momentum, where we can say that P initial equals P final. We're going to assume that the boron atom was motionless before impact, so that means that the mass of the uh, neutron times the initial velocity of the neutron plus the mass of the boron, and I'll go ahead and use capital M to indicate that it's 10 times the mass of the neutron times V initial equals, and since they stick together, we could write M plus big M times V final. Now, of course, V initial for the boron is zero, so this becomes mv initial equals the sum m plus big M times v final. Now plug in what big M is equal to. We could say that m times v initial equals, that would be uh, m plus 10m times v final, or m times v initial equals 11m times v final. Now, of course, since we don't know what the initial velocity of the neutron was and we don't know what the final velocity is of the neutron and the boron together, we can still find the laws in kinetic energy because what we can say here is that the loss or the delta kinetic energy would be equal to kinetic energy initial minus kinetic energy final. Now, why do we have initial before final? Because we know the initial energy is larger than the final energy, so we end up with a positive quantity, the amount lost. Of course, if we reverse these two, then the change in kinetic energy will be negative, indicating the loss. It depends how you want to look at it. But let's go ahead and calculate that. So the delta kinetic energy is equal to the initial kinetic energy, which is the kinetic energy of the neutron, which is one-half m v initial squared, even though we don't know what it is, we can simply write it as v initial, minus the kinetic energy of the two combined, which would be one half times the sum of the two, which is 11m, times, that would be v final. All right, now we can somehow write v final in terms of v initial. Let's do that. So we can say that v final is equal to m times v initial divided by 11m, or it's v initial divided by 11. All right, now let's go ahead and plug that in there. So we can say that this is equal to 1 half m v initial squared minus 1 half times 11m times v final, which is, oh, I need to square it, make sure it's squared, of course. And so this becomes a v initial squared over 11 squared, like this. And then notice that this 11 and one of those cancels out, the one halves cancel out, the m's cancel out, so I can cancel out the one halves. Well, actually, I guess I can't because I'm not equating it yet to something on the left side. So I'll go ahead and keep the one halves for now. I was, I was trying to simplify things the way we normally do, but we can do that here. So let's go ahead and continue, not canceling anything out. Uh, first of all, I'm going to simplify this, so this can be written as 1 half mv initial squared minus 1 half times mv initial squared divided by 11. No longer squared because that canceled out. But now I need to write that over a common denominator. So I'm going to write this as 1 half times 11 mv initial squared over 11 minus one-half mv initial squared over 11. So I have 11 of these minus one of those, that gives me 10 of those, so this is equal to 10 times one-half mv initial squared divided by 11. 10 divided by 2 is 5, 
So this can now be written as 5 over 11 mv initial squared, and this is going to equal the loss in kinetic energy. So how much energy is lost in the collision? 5 11 mv initial squared. If you want to write that in terms of how much initial energy you had in the first place, well, then you can write it like this. So you can say that delta kinetic energy can also be written as 10 11 of 1 half mv initial squared. And notice that means that almost 90% of the initial energy is lost. This is the initial kinetic energy, and this is how much of it we lost. 10 11 or simplified, can be written as 5 11 mv initial squared. And that is how it's done.